what's up knife people back again with more of these knives uh, this is a salt 2 by the way and h2 h1 i'm sorry steel um so today got a lot to get into today um see if i can get through it with no fumbles um I uh, wanted to give a special shout out to start off to uh, my 200 subs. I finally hit 200. Uh, that happened over the week. Uh, so I want to say thank you to everybody uh, for the newcomers, new viewers, new subscribers. Uh, and again, to all the people that have been here from the beginning. Uh, so big shout out to you guys. I will be doing, as I've been doing every 50 subs, I'm going to do a small little giveaway uh, to show thanks. So I'll be doing that probably next week or in the next coming week. Um, so the video today is going to be um, about my collection of 2019 standouts. Uh, so these are my standout blades that I bought in my collection. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'll give you a quick little intro. Uh, my name is Danny. I do uh, collection unboxings from unboxing all the way through modifications um, and just pretty much give you my opinion on uh, the whole process of buying knives from you know from the distributors or you know stores all the way till I get it and um, my experience with them I'll throw little small uh, in-use videos up every once in a while to let you know what some of the knives look like in use but for the most part I like to showcase a lot of my knives and show them off. As you can see, we got a lot of stuff here on deck, ready to be seen. So we're gonna go through this process now and give you my, uh, again, my 2019 collection standouts, which means basically the knives that uh, to me were just stood out for one reason or another. Um, so those will be my top picks for the year. Uh, if you want to take it as a recommendation, uh, that's up to you guys. Again, no grease zone, so everything I tell you is unpaid for, um, uh, not a commercial like most channels, but, you know, this is my honest opinion, so if it helps anybody out, great. If it doesn't, it's just my opinion. So let's get this started for 2019 uh, standouts. Here we go. So first, first knife on the list uh, will be, ta -da, I got them covered up over here, is the Kaiser Gemini. Kaiser Gemini in shredded carbon fiber, um, flat ground blade, Ray Laconico. Um, this was a S35 VN blade. <clears throat> really nice EDC. Um, this became real quick, uh, a real heavily carried um, EDC for me. Uh, you know, it's a, a bit of a cross between a gentleman's knife and just an everyday user. Um, has a lot of great potential to, to cut with the, the blade shape. Um, shredded carbon fiber. Um, the one thing I noticed is the, the shredded carbon does kind of buff down a bit as you use it. So it was a little chippy at first, but it kind of smoothed out. Um, you got contoured scales a bit. Uh, only thing difference with this Gemini was it's not a frame lock, which is the reason I liked it. Uh, I have the potential to squeeze the frame lock on most of them so since this is a liner lock um, it's very quick deployment very smooth action as you can see so real quick they became one of my favorites liner lock easy to disengage so um, only downside I saw on this was that they actually put a lanyard hole on it uh, and I think they just killed it with such nice carbon fiber they could have just left it out um, probably not a knife I would put a lanyard on anyways so that was if anything the only thing I think killed it was 
just putting a hole in the handle like that. So nevertheless, this is number one. Number one standout, Kaiser Gemini in shredded carbon fiber. Uh, next up here, uh, we got the ProTech SBR short bladed rock eye. Um, again, this is no particular order or category, just standout knives. Um, this one in particular, I liked because it's just a good EDC size. Um, uh, you have a lot of weird shape in autos. Uh, this one had a nice Les George blade, uh, kind of a mid-sized knife, not too big, not too small. Um, it's really cool. I mean, look at the shape. Um, it's a Protec, deep carry clip. Uh, action is great. You got these like, kind of Tron spacing in the back, these little grooves. Um, the action is stupendous. I'll show you that right now. Um, see here? Bam! Sweet. Love that action. See that? Very sweet. Um, so overall, out of, I got a few autos. This one was the one that just stood out the most. Really, uh, um, just really blew me away. So uh, I've recommended this knife for a while now. Uh, anybody interested in autos or if you can carry them legally, uh, this would be a good way to go. A good size knife. Uh, really can't go wrong. Um, only downside I saw to this one, uh, in my opinion, was just the aluminum. Um, you, you're just prone to scratching and stuff. Uh, haven't carried it too much for, you know, legal reasons, but uh, really love it and have put it through some use. Um, what else? Oh, the other thing also is because it is an auto, you have to, unless you learn how to close it with one hand, which is not the safest thing to do like that uh you literally have to use two hands to close it but you know that's pretty minor so anyways that's my second pick protec sbr <clears throat> next up here i have what i got here <clears throat> i did want to do a quick little shout out to a gentleman's carry knife um Ferrum Forge Gent. This is the more expensive one with carbon fiber and uh, uh, stonewash blade. Uh, they have more simpler, um, uh, less expensive um, models of it with G10 scales and a different blade shape. I mean, different blade finish. Uh, so you can get this knife for pretty much under a hundred bucks easily. Um, but overall gent carry small knife um, I know the elementum was up there as a good pick but I didn't try the elementum but I would say fit and finish uh, quality material this would probably be a better knife to go with for a few more bucks so um, I really recommend the gent as a gentleman's everyday carry if that's what you need to carry um obviously we all work in different settings so really good knife not too scary looking so the gent was another standout firm forge mass drop or drop collaboration so go check them out um what else here next one i have this baby so yeah, this was up to show off a little bit. Um, only knife I actually put my name on. Uh, be a little cheesy, but um, yeah, this one was another knife that blew me away um, for various reasons. Uh, main reason was just the performance. Uh, the performance of the blade. You got such a thin grind, flat. This is like a slicing machine. You see all the scratches already. I put it through its paces. Um, this one comes in 12C27 uh, knife metal, actual knife metal, So, which is why it takes such a good edge. Um, very easy to sharpen. Um, so again, this is just a standout for the performance. 
Um, and those of you looking for a nice secondary blade, uh, slip joint uh, with the pocket clip, which is another plus, deep carry. Uh, this is a, probably a knife to go. It's a very inexpensive, about 60 bucks. Most places, 50, 60 bucks. Um, they do have a different metal. Uh, I think it's um, S90V, but a little more expensive if you wanna go that route. But for the most part, um, this knife took my, I guess, performer budget carry, I guess. Um, only thing they did probably need to work on a bit was the rounding of the G10 was a bit rough. Um, it does have four way stop, which is pretty cool. Um, more of a safety. So you have one, two, oh, four, four uh, stops on the blade. Um, which is a good safety for it. Um, let's see what else? Again, good secondary knife. Uh, if you ever wanna hand your knife over to somebody, you don't have to worry about them messing this up. And uh, one last thing I didn't like too much about the blade, and this kind of bugs me on a lot of knives, is this, like the bug out. They have this protruding back of the blade sticking out that really just irks me. So, I mean, besides that, I mean, this knife was pretty awesome. The performance uh, pretty much took it over the top for me. So uh, I think Big Red had this also as one of his favorite knives. And like he said, you can't buy them all, can't review them all. So uh, this is all I've gotten. But again, Manly Wasp. Uh, either in 12C27 or S90V. Um, pretty sure you can't go wrong. So another standout knife here. <clears throat> Woo, 12 minutes. Okay, let's move it along here. Um, another standout knife. Some of you might know what this is. Probably got the longest name in in the knife community. But this is the Hoag Ritter RSK. I think it's GS1 or something like that. Got a thumb stud, uh, access lock, uh, which is now available to all uh, makers. So everybody's kind of using their, uh, putting their spin on the access lock. But I noticed that the access lock on this knife is a lot more crisper than the axis lock on this knife. I think a lot of you know what this is, Super Freak. Um, you can tell the action's a little stiffer on it, but pretty much the same type of knife. You can see the resemblance there. Um, but yeah, the axis lock here and the axis lock here seem to work a little different but the hog i think takes it as far as smoothness um not sure why but the action's a little better so the hog um i'll give you the reasons why it became my favorite knife uh probably favorite working knife um you can get a full grip for one Small hands, big hands, get a full grip, nice jimping, just a solid knife. The G10 is got a lot of traction, um, open construction, so you can clean it pretty well. Um, again, this springs, I think, are updated with Omega Springs, uh, from my knowledge. So that might be what's giving it a bit, a bit more crisper action. But um, what else here? Durability, function, uh, the steel. You got quality steel. You got M390 steel on here. I don't think it's listed on there, but yeah. You got high quality M390 steel on here. Um, there it is. So again, nice deep carry pocket clip. Um, so I basically call this my heavy hitter of the year. Um, 
this one along with the shaman are probably like my top dogs when it comes to heavy knives you know mid uh mid size full size you know heavy duty knives uh this one knocked it out of the park for me so and this is also a new um uh, a new addition i guess um so it's not an old knife uh shaman's a bit old so uh this is a new 2019 model so that took my uh heavy hitter workhorse uh knife you know for 2019 doug ritter hogue rsk um and of course, I love me some shaman here. So I do uh, look out for exclusives and stuff also. So I think that's uh, a bit of the um, fun in knife collecting is looking uh, and hunting for some of these uh, exclusives as well. So I got a lot of that type of stuff this year also. But like I said, um, it's not a standout knife because it's been around for a while already. So. But again, one of my favorite designs as well. <clears throat> and I'll hit those later in a little bit. Um, next knife. Uh, I'm going to have to make some room here. Uh, next knife that blew me away, stand out, was this Pena uh, X-Series Rhino. Uh, this is Enrique Pena's uh, production line with Riot. Uh, really blew me away for a couple things. The design, blade design, handle design. As you can see, the speed holes here are not only on the lock side, they are on the show side. And they come in real handy when it comes to pinching it and closing it. So I can get a good grip on it. But what takes this knife over the top is just the action. Uh, the Riot action, you have that drop, shut. Um, you have a, a detent ramp, which makes this very smooth. Let's see if I can get that to fall. Ah, see, scary. So it comes down with the guillotine action. If you guillotine action, if you let it. <laughs> so watch out. Uh, that's what the pinching the speed holes helps for closing it um, obviously it's got a thumb stud deployment as well uh, this one came in thumb stud and flipper deployment <clears throat> so both actions are good oops that was my fault let me get this better yep so same action really good action really nice blade um just overall a nice design nice horizontal flats and and vertical flats on the blade so a lot of nice manufacturing and design work i think came into this a real hefty knife um for titanium so this is kind of like my titanium standout I got a lot of titanium knives this year, but this one was just overall the best. I know you probably pay for the quality, but I mean, when you get that kind of action, uh, can't beat it, quite honestly. So again, whoo, scary. Nice action, skates out. Um, one lucky thing, I was able to run into Enrique Pena, who did do a little bit of uh, modifying uh thanks to him uh to the action uh so he did kind of personalize it a little bit for me so a big shout out to him as well um but that didn't make uh this knife any better for me uh i always liked it the design was great so um you might have to fidget with your action a little bit to get it where you want it uh for your own personal use depending if you get the thumb stud and flipper version which was a little trickier on my part, but I like them both. So again, one of my favorite knives. And I kind of compared it to another titanium that I had, which was another good knife, Ferrum Forge, Fordis, um, production line. 
This is their first production um, that they did. So uh, kind of compared it with that and just the quality of this one feels a little better. Um, a little heavier, feels a little more heavy duty. This one feels pretty light in the handle. So not sure if they're using the same titanium or not. But you can tell the action on this one, you have to click through that detent. It'll still draw but you can feel the detent ball in there. Well, you can see it. But yeah, you have to get past that detent ball, a little click to have it fall. But other than that, it works pretty good. And then it looks like a, yeah. So that's probably why this one didn't make it to my top uh, of 2019. So again, this is my standout Titanium Pena uh, Rhino X-Series. Whew, that took a long time. Need some water. So, what else do we got here? Um, so I will go over, now I also do fixed blades. I think you guys all know, uh, I am a fixed blade channel. And that's kind of what started me off. Uh, everything from LT Wright, Bradford's, and of course, the big standout this year for me was the Fiddleback Forge Knives. Um, they are a little bit expensive because they are custom made. There's no, uh, they're all one of a kind, but the fit and finish, quality, materials, uh, craftsmanship is pretty much out of this world. Uh, all seamless construction. You got micarta, um, inlays in there. You got micarta pins, micarta liners, orange liners. So you got a lot going on. You got forging, stamp forging on this. This makes it, you know, gives it its own little character. This one's an A2 steel, which is a work steel. So um, overall, this guy took my breath away. Uh, when it came to fixed blades, um, anything Fiddleback Forge uh, is pretty much a go for me. I uh, wish I can afford more of them, but the grip on this knife is absolutely wonderful. Again, you got no hot spots, no rough spots. You can literally use this knife all day long and have no issues, no matter what you use it with, what you use it on, but. Yeah, great knife, awesome grip, um, awesome finishing. So definitely um, Fiddleback Forges, uh, you know, compared to other production type knives like Bradford, which are pretty simpleton, but uh, they are good knives, but um, you know, they don't have the type of fit and finish that you're gonna find on these kind of handles. So, you know, if you want to pay for it, uh, Fiddleback Forge is definitely a way to go. So, big shout out to uh, Fiddleback Forge, Andy Roy. So, <clears throat> big thumbs up. And so this is my standout uh, fixed blades of the year. Here, it'll stay here uh, okay so that'll be my standout fixed blade so far that's where i'm at <clears throat> and last but definitely not least is i'm gonna show you um my favorite standout here it is Probably no surprise. Let me clean this blade off. Um, this is the TRM, or Three Rivers Manufacturing Atom. Uh, this one here is in DLC coating, black DLC coating. Um, pretty much just a great knife overall. Uh, you know, you got deep clip. 
you got quality um uh, you got quality hardware you got like titanium liners titanium screws um you got sanded down like phosphor bronze liner uh phosphor bronze washers um you can change scales on them um and not only that but just the action is very very well thumb stud pretty just a basic type of knife that doesn't really need a lot of extra extra details i mean it's just very nice if you look at the design on it um it's really really cool i mean carbon fiber scales that feel great um the only downside to this knife obviously is the wait time uh I think January, mid-January, they're supposed to be opening up more sales uh, for these and other Three River Knives. So, um, yeah, I'm going to join the bandwagon and call this my most standout knife of the year. Uh, just for simple, you know, quality in action. I mean, it's just a simple knife to the point. I'm not a stunt thumb stud guy. So the fidget factor isn't there too much, but uh, I just, I can't, can't get enough of it. Um, and then it's a liner lock, so that helps me from power gripping it and, you know, like frame locks. So, uh, yeah. And actually one thing I did want to talk about this knife real quick before I show you a couple other knives was, um, let's see here, just the comparison and shape to like the native they have the same kind of straight back here as you can see there kind of so it does give you a bit of the same uh feeling in hand just no ramping this one has no jimping but you get that same locked in feeling with the straight top straight top on the blade just one continuous line so that's what it really reminded me of um you can see on that one uh i think the the native chief or spiderco native chief uh, has was what it really reminded me of um so yeah that's about the same here and actually this is one of my favorite knives here too um actually that 23 big shout out to uh keith kevin can channel go check him out I got this on one of his uh, um, sales that he had, or uh, trimmings, as he calls it. Uh, one of the channels that really uh, uh, turned me out to knives and actually, um, you know, gave me inspiration to start my collection videos. So, again, big shout out to Mr. Keith Kevin Ken, number 23, as I call him. Uh, thank you for selling me this knife. And again, this is, the, this is what I mean about hunting for exclusives, hunting for the stuff that you like. So to me, that's part of the collection process, always has been. So big shout out to this knife as well. Um, but I did want to just show the comparison in the shape. I can always show you on um, this one as well, which is just a bigger version of it. You have the same streamline on top. Just makes it very easy to grab and use which is why the Shaman is one of my favorites. Um, but again, this one took it for 2019. Uh, obviously you have no choil, but you can, uh, you can kind of creep up right here on it. So turn this off and I'll stop gushing on this guy, but yeah, definitely the Atom is my top knife of the year. And for 200 bucks ish, uh, you get a great knife. So that's the Adam. Ooh, a lot going on. Let's actually put it right here. And move these over. So we can get them on a little shot here. Sweet. What else do I got? So that was pretty much it for all my standouts. Um, let me give you a quick little look. So these are my 2019 standouts. We got. Dun, dun, dun. 
done. So you got your fiddle back, fiddle back forge, cap heart. You got the Kaiser Gemini and shredded carbon fiber. You got the Protec SBR, the Gent Drop Fern Forge Collaboration, Manly Wasp, Penya X Series Rhino. Um, the Hogue RSK, Doug Ritter, and of course the Atom, Three Rivers Manufacturing. Yeah. So I'll call these all my standouts. Maybe like that. Let's see right here. Get them all in the picture. Damn. Sweet knives, sweet knives, good. So there we go. Those are my standouts. I did wanna mention a couple more things before I'm out. Um, I know I didn't try a lot of budget knives. Or I didn't put a lot of budget knives out here um, because I didn't buy too many of them. Uh, I was able to get a few of them uh, over the year. Um, none of them really stood out to me. Uh, towards the end of the year, I did get a couple more that I did give out on giveaways. The Texel, the um, Best Tech Texel, uh, and the SOG Terminus. Those were actually really good knives, but when I stick to budget knives, um, I kind of stick to Steel Wheel, uh, maybe some lower end Spider Um So these are a lot of the knives that I like for budget purposes. Um, I did try out some Civivis, but they didn't blow me out of the water. Um, this one was okay, but the action to me seems it's crisp, but um, maybe just this model in particular uh, didn't really blow me out of the water. Uh, I did try to fancy it up with the Damascus, um, but yeah, it wasn't something I was 100% thrilled on. So this is the Damascus Duras. Um, Another knife that was a little bit of a disappointment was the Giant Mouse Ace Biblio. Um, just the action, the action really kind of killed it. I love the knife, but the flipping action is kind of grandpa-ish. It just barely rockets out, so you have to put more into it. But really gorgeous knife, one of my favorites, but um, just the action didn't blow me away. Uh, another quick knife I'll show you that I liked um, but again had little flaws that um, didn't really uh, blow me out of the water uh, for the price I think it was a little bit overpriced but um, you might be able to hear it it's got that um, lock rock also that um, it's kind of weird. It's not st loose, but it does give you a little, little sound there. So anyways, um, quiet carry, IQ, um, good knife, real sleek looking and very nice design, but um, nice action, but didn't blow me away. Uh, what else? Um, same thing with the Freak. Uh, really nice knife. But the action, to me, I think could have been a little better. Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe because this model's been out already. So, it, you know, other than the G10 difference um, and the standouts, that kind of stuff, uh, not much changed, changed on it or was new about it. So, again, not too much of a standout knife for me. <clears throat> I did go with the Sage 5 a while ago, uh, about a week ago, two weeks ago. Uh, it's been doing okay. I'll give you guys a rundown on that, but um, not a lightweight, but you know, it's still pretty good. Um, didn't blow me out of the water. Um, and I think I already showed you the Fortis. It was nice, but uh, I think some things on it could have been a little better. Uh, most, mostly the design of the handle. I'm, you know, kind of weird, but also a nice knife, 
kind of beefy, uh, you know, apocalyptic looking knife. So here we go. Um, I think that's about it, guys. Um, I pretty much, uh, you know, want to say thank you again all year long for everybody tuning in, watching. Um, there's a couple knives I want to try out there, maybe like a bug out, Elementum, some OTFs, Strider, things like that. Uh, that hopefully I can get into this year. Um, so these are all kind of my, again, my standout knives. Um, and oh, one thing I did on one also mention. Uh, part of my channel is to show you guys, um, you know, where I buy knives from GP, DLT, Blade HQ, Knives Ship Free. Um, and I do want to give a quick shout out to my favorite store to purchase the fat. Uh, over the year, um, I guess my standout uh, knife distributor of the year is going to go to, that's right gp knives you know they're the only ones that you know give you this kind of stuff stickers that you know don't even ask for them sometimes uh shipping is great uh customer service is great and they're not stingy on giving you little things like this that i think to consumers are a big deal it might be just a sticker or a pen but you know uh, very nice of them to do things like that so again my shout out goes out to GP Knives for uh, Knife Distributor of the Year. I'd like to know who else, uh, you know, what choices other people choose as well. But I can't believe it. I'm 36 minutes in. Uh, and <laughs> I don't know what else to say, guys. But again, thank you for watching. These are all my standouts. One more time for the year some more stuff and if you guys all like these knives you know how i do it stick around for some more i'll catch you guys on the flip side and you guys have a good happy new year take it easy